Have you ever wondered who our closest extinct human relative is? The answer is the Neanderthals, a species that has long intrigued scientists and historians alike. They are not merely a footnote in human evolution, but a fascinating chapter of our shared history. Neanderthals existed during a period known as the Pleistocene epoch. This spanned from around 2.6 million years ago to roughly 11,700 years ago. This was a time when the Earth was in the grip of recurring ice ages, a harsh and unforgiving landscape that our Neanderthal kin not only survived in but thrived. A common image many of us hold of Neanderthals is of a primitive, grunting cave dweller. This is largely due to early depictions and misconceptions that have prevailed over the years. But as scientists unearth more about these extinct relatives, we're finding that they were far from the brutish caricatures of popular imagination. In fact, evidence suggests that Neanderthals were quite sophisticated. They made and used a diverse set of sophisticated tools, were skilled hunters of large animals and even used fire. Furthermore, there is evidence that Neanderthals used symbolic and decorative objects, suggesting a capacity for complex thought and cultural expression. It's also worth noting that these misconceptions about Neanderthals being unintelligent stem from comparisons with our own species, Homo sapiens. We tend to judge intelligence based on our own standards and achievements. But if we consider the challenges Neanderthals faced in their environment and their success in surviving for hundreds of thousands of years, we can appreciate their intelligence and adaptability. So, as we delve deeper into the mystery of Neanderthals, we're finding a species that was far more complex and advanced than previously thought. They were not just survivors of a harsh ice age environment, but a species that demonstrated remarkable resilience and ingenuity. So, Neanderthals were not the brutish, primitive species we once thought they were, but were they like us? Join us as we continue to unravel the fascinating story of our closest extinct relatives. How did Neanderthals come to be, and where did they live? These are the questions that have intrigued scientists and history enthusiasts alike for decades. To answer these, we delve into the fascinating journey of evolution. Around half a million years ago, a species known as Homo heidelbergensis roamed the Earth. This species is considered the common ancestor of both modern humans and Neanderthals. Over time, as Homo heidelbergensis spread across Europe and Asia, those in Europe evolved into what we now know as Neanderthals. These sturdy hominids adapted to survive in the harsh climates of the last ice age, which peaked around 20,000 years ago. Picture this. Biting cold winds, ice sheets stretching as far as the eye can see, and temperatures plunging to bone-chilling depths. Yet, the Neanderthals thrived. They had short, robust bodies, which helped them retain heat, and a large nose to humidify and warm the cold air before it reached their lungs. Neanderthals inhabited a vast region spanning from the Atlantic coasts of Europe to the Ural Mountains in Western Asia. They lived in a variety of environments, from the chilly plains of northern Europe to the warmer Mediterranean climates. Their adaptability to different climates is a testament to their evolutionary success. But it wasn't just about surviving. Neanderthals were also proficient hunters. They hunted large game, like mammoths and woolly rhinoceros, using close combat hunting techniques. This required not just physical strength, but also strategic thinking and cooperation showing that they were not just brawny but brainy too. In conclusion, the story of Neanderthal evolution paints a picture of a resilient species, adept at survival in challenging conditions and capable of intelligent behavior. They were not mere cavemen, but a sophisticated species, well adapted to their environment. They were a species well adapted to their time and place, but what about their social structure and culture? Now, that's a story for another scene. So. Stay tuned. If you enjoyed the journey, don't forget to like and subscribe for more fascinating history content. Your support keeps the stories alive. What were Neanderthal societies like, and did they have a culture? Well, let's dig into the evidence and see what it reveals. Neanderthal societies were likely small and closely knit, with numbers probably not exceeding a few dozen individuals in a group. This is suggested by the size and layout of their living spaces, which were often organized around a central hearth. Hunting was a crucial part of Neanderthal life, and it required cooperation and coordination. They hunted large game like mammoths, bison, and deer, using close-range weapons such as spears. 
This suggests that Neanderthals were not just brutish loners but worked together in coordinated groups, hinting at a certain level of social structure. There's also evidence suggesting a division of labor among Neanderthals. Some researchers believe that men were primarily responsible for hunting, while women gathered plant foods and took care of children. However, this is still a topic of debate among scientists. But what about culture? Did Neanderthals have it? Well, the evidence is quite compelling. Neanderthals buried their dead, often with grave goods, indicating a belief in an afterlife or at least a respect for the deceased. They also used pigments like ochre, possibly for body decoration or art. Some Neanderthal sites even contain collections of bird feathers and shells, suggesting an appreciation for beauty. Perhaps the most intriguing evidence of Neanderthal culture is their potential for music. A bone flute made from the thigh bone of a cave bear was found in Slovenia and it's believed to be between 43,000 to 82,000 years old. If it is indeed a musical instrument, it indicates that Neanderthals could create and appreciate music, adding another layer to their cultural complexity. So, Neanderthals had a complex social structure and even a culture, but what led to their extinction? What happened to the Neanderthals, and why did they go extinct? This question has puzzled scientists for years. While the exact reason behind their demise remains a mystery, several theories have been proposed. One of the most prevalent theories suggests that rapid climate change may have played a significant role. The Earth was in a state of flux when Neanderthals thrived. With severe temperature swings, their environment was continually changing, and this instability may have been too much for the Neanderthals to adapt to. They were accustomed to colder climates, and as the Earth warmed, their survival became increasingly challenging. Then there's the theory of competition with modern humans. Around the same time that Neanderthals began to disappear, Homo sapiens started to proliferate across the globe. With superior tools and cognitive abilities, modern humans may have outcompeted the Neanderthals for resources. Some even suggest that conflict between the two species may have occurred, leading to the Neanderthals' downfall. But what if the Neanderthals didn't completely vanish? What if they became part of us? This brings us to the theory of interbreeding. Genetic studies have shown that most people of non-African descent carry a small percentage of Neanderthal DNA. This suggests that interbreeding between Neanderthals and modern humans did occur, meaning that the Neanderthals may not have gone extinct in the traditional sense. Instead, they may have been absorbed into the modern human population. Each of these theories has its merits and its challenges, and it's likely that the truth involves a combination of these factors. The extinction of the Neanderthals wasn't a simple event but a complex interplay of environmental, competitive, and genetic factors. Despite their extinction, Neanderthals have left a lasting legacy on our own species. Their DNA lives on within us, and their story continues to shape our understanding of human evolution and our place in the natural world. The mystery of their disappearance only adds to the intrigue and fascination surrounding these close relatives of ours. What is the legacy of Neanderthals, and how do they continue to influence us today? It's a question that often stirs up a great deal of fascination and intrigue. As we delve into this topic, we find that the Neanderthals, these remarkable beings who roamed the earth tens of thousands of years ago have left an indelible mark on our species. The most tangible legacy of Neanderthals is etched into our very genes. Scientific research has revealed that up to 2% of the DNA of people from outside Africa is derived from Neanderthals. This might seem like a small percentage, but when you consider the vast complexity of the human genome, it becomes clear that this is a substantial contribution. This Neanderthal DNA within us is not just a dormant relic of the past. It influences various aspects of our physiology, from our immune response to diseases to the color of our hair. In fact, some traits that we typically consider human might have their roots in our Neanderthal ancestors. But the influence of Neanderthals isn't just biological. Studying them provides us with invaluable insights into our own history and evolution. Neanderthals were the first known species to bury their dead, use complex tools, and perhaps even create art, suggesting a level of cognitive sophistication previously thought to be unique to us. By understanding Neanderthals, we understand more about ourselves, our origins, our evolution, and our capacity for thought and culture.
They are, in many ways, a mirror into our past, reflecting the trials and triumphs of human survival in a harsh and unforgiving world. As we continue to uncover more about these fascinating beings, we are reminded of the interconnectedness of life on Earth. We are not isolated entities, but rather, we are part of a rich tapestry of life that has been woven over billions of years. Neanderthals, our closest extinct human relative, continue to fascinate us and shape our understanding of human history. Their legacy is not just a chapter in our past, but a living, breathing part of our present a testament to the resilience and adaptability of life.